AEW didn't sell out double or nothing in Vegas this year, and that was justified. When you look at the build-up to this show, this event did not deserve to be a sellout. And as I watched the show, those fans in Vegas that may have normally gone to an AEW event in the past that chose not to, they probably made the right decision. Because God... This was a really, really rough watch for me. Me! Me! Look at me, God, I'm so pretty! We start off with this battle royal and you got people in the ring, you got people outside of the ring. Make up your fucking mind what you're going to do. And as I'm watching this, a couple of things really stood out to me. One, it's a shame that Ricky Starks is just one of 21 in this match. Like, how, how is that a possibility? How is that a thing? And then I turn around and I say, same question and statement for Jay fucking White. It's a switchblade. It's supposed to be a big deal. Why is he just one of 21 in this match? You can say, well, him and Ricky Starks went at it. The point is, is they were just bit players in this shit. Like, what the fuck is AEW doing? And what I really struggle with is how Orange Cassidy went from a mildly funny comedy character to one of the most unstoppable monsters on the fucking AEW roster. Some of you are going to point to and say, well, him and Swerve Strickland had an interesting and fun finish to the match. Maybe still doesn't overcome the original point. Why does Orange Cassidy get booked like a fucking monster? And the monsters like Bill, Big Bill and others not. It makes no goddamn sense to me. This Jericho versus Adam Cole unsanctioned match was so unsanctioned, this shit should have been on the pre-show. That was terrible. It really was. It was a bunch of overbooked crap. Oh, look, it's Soraya. Who gives a crap? Here comes Britt Baker, DMD, to make the save for her man. All right, cool, whatever. But the crowd wasn't into this match. I wasn't into this match. And then it's an unsanctioned match, and you've got a fucking ref stoppage is how it ends? Well, certainly somebody's going to fact check me in the comments and say, there have been other unsanctioned matches that have ended with the ref stoppages. Probably right. And it doesn't fucking matter because in this particular case, it was stupid. This match sucked. Look at me, God, I'm so pretty. <laughs> oh, hello there. My name is Karen, and I like carrots and nuts. Me, me. And of course, you know me by now. I am the horse faced bitch of my wife. They just fucking get it. And how dare that fucking mule face, Aubrey Edwards, stick her nose, her snout, into business where it doesn't belong with my fucking husband, Jeff fucking Garrett. That's why you got that guitar shot, you hussy. You will take two guitar shots next time you ever get in my man's business ever again. You screwed up everything. Everything, I said. I was looking so fly, like an equine, from the sky, me, me, we could have been something, Aubrey Edwards, you have me, the horse face bitch of a wife, they just fucking get it, Madison Rain is there, nah, Madison Rain, we had the goat, and then we could have added you, as the mule for the group, we could have been the barnyard, and the root to women's division of AEW, Instead, you wanted to get in there with your overacting, dumb-looking ass, and I had it! Me! Me! That's what you get, bitch! Here I come, Jeff! It's 2023, and we still gotta deal with this shit. 2023! And we still gotta deal with this shit! I swear to God, it's a fucking conspiracy against me! I don't get time for this! I'm in 2020!
2023 that somehow, some way, this Memphis Midterm piece of crap still finds a way to not only, not only get on national primetime cable television on a weekly basis, but there's an audacity, a goal, temerity to book this 10,000 guitars broken, zero dimes drawn motherfucker in pay-per-view matches getting goddamn tag title shots. When is enough enough? He has never drawn money. He will never draw money. He has never n been entertaining. He has always fucking sucked. Ding dong dum dicks. He continues to fucking suck. And no matter how much you try to tell yourself he doesn't, we know once and for all that this Memphis Midcard piece of crap, you founder, should go the fuck away and never come back. Because at the end of the day, he ruins everything he goddamn touches, and that's why it will always be Fuck Jeff Jarrett season! Believe it or not, what I thought was maybe the best match of the night, or the match that got me the most, was the ladder match for the TNT Championship. It was! You've seen, a, I think, a number of people talking about the last two matches really saved this show. I don't know about all that. But this match, I thought, was maybe the most enjoyable of the night for me. Uh, now, one thing I'll call out here. Seeing a big dude like Wardlow doing a swanton off the top of that ladder, that's some special shit. I don't give a crap. But as one of my followers on Twitter said, it would have been nice if he did it to his actual opponent. I'll give you that. Secondly, I'd rather you save a spot like that for, like, all in at Wembley, or a world title match, but it is what it is. This was fine for what it was. Wardlow goes over, even broken ladders and every damn thing else. It was one of the few things I found that I actually enjoyed on Double or Nothing this year. This wouldn't be AEW if you didn't have too many goddamn title belts. Well, to be fair, WWE does too, so what the hell's the difference? Addicted to championships, that's what the hell they are. The Trios Championship. At least we got a sighting of the Acclaim, because God knows at this point in time in the show, it frickin' needed it. And Max Caster spit that hot fire on the microphone. He said, buddy, he said, buddy Matthews, watching as his he's getting cucked by a guy named Dominic. <laughs> We, we, we couldn't just put the straps on the acclaimed? Like, are we really pretending like the House of Black is an interesting, compelling group or gimmick or faction? The acclaimed are! Find an excuse to put them on TV more. Fine, whatever. Like, I really didn't care about this match. But I'll remember Max Caster's burn on Buddy Matthews, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Jade Cargill is just... Fucking gorgeous. Brandon Phillips is a very, very happy man, I'm sure. Because he gets to look and says, that's my girl. Wow. Just incredible. And her entrance, that was fire. How the pretty girls walk. Indeed. They walk however the hell Jade Cargo walks. But that entrance felt big deal. Like, one thing you could say about Jade Cargill is when she appears, you feel like you are seeing a star. And this match against Ty Valkyrie, there are a couple of rough spots here, who can't deny that, but I thought it was solid. It wasn't great, wasn't terrible, it was solid. And I thought, okay, you know, you saw some rumblings about maybe uh, Botchlander would be coming back here, and I thought, okay, she wins, now she goes to 60-0, you're teasing Botchlander, and then there you go. But you're going to wait for this. But no, they couldn't fucking do that. The same weekend Bianca Belair sees her long title reign end. You got Chris Botchlander coming out and beating Jade Cargill in like two goddamn minutes. Now, to me, my opinion, if you really wanted to smash over Botchlander here, you don't do that by having her be the second match for Jade Cargill, unless you were intentionally trying to flip Jade Cargill 100% babyface, which this night kind of felt like a little bit, and that match certainly so fucking should. If anything, Boslander should be getting the shit booed out of her, because how dare she come back and take that opportunity like that? At least wait to goddamn Wednesday on Dynamite. And then we get the Four Pillars match for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. The four pillars of AEW, yet they can't even main event the fucking pay-per-view. 
And frankly, it shouldn't have. Because the build-up to this suck. This feels totally like one of those concepts that looks great on paper, and then when you get to start building up to it, you're like, Pfft. Oh look! Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti are having a baby. Who gives a crap? Who gives a fuck? Anyways. This match wasn't bad. Oh no, no, no. It was actually good. Uh, the, the round spot where the round, the, the round the horn spot where they did the tribute to their mentors. Like that flowed well. That was good. It was a good match. I just really didn't care because at no point in time did I think MJF was at any potential risk of a loss here. Nor should he have been, frankly. Um, these guys did the best they could, I think, given the circumstance of the situation. They were just booked into a bad spot. Like to me, this is a perfect example of, shitty creative and shitty writing leading up to a pay-per-view that no matter how much the match tries, it just can't overcome that. You know, the way the match finished, fine, as long as it does one thing and one thing only. There is only one opponent for MJF that we want to see it all in in Wembley. There's only one. His protege just got beat by MJF. It's Sting, damn it. Sting. We know MJF fears Sting. You want to put together the best main event you possibly can for Wembley? It's Sting versus MJF for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. All other matches bow down in fucking comparison. What's the problem, MJF? Brock? Chicken? We know you're scared. You should be scared. Because Sting will send... That young lion will roar! And he will take what you hold most dear! That AEW World Heavyweight Championship! I'm going to totally confess, Anarchy in the, at the arena, not my type of jam at all. Whoopee! John Moxley's gonna fucking bleed. Like, I don't see that every week he wrestles on Dynamite or something. Nah. Oh, whoopee, the elite, the bucks that suck, they're doing thumbtack spots. Nah. I probably could envision that if I was there at the show in person in Vegas, I might have gotten more entertainment value out of it, as opposed to being at home and already three plus hours into a pay-per-view and I'm fucking tired as hell and I gotta watch this stupid crap. At least they gave, like, I guess they gave Wheeler U to the shine here by letting him hit the pinfall, whatever, who cares? We'll see what the big deal is. Again, this is one of these things that's not even worth me like ranting and raving about because I just don't care. It's just not for me and sometimes that's okay, right? But that is a common theme for me as I looked at this show. It was a lot of it that I just didn't care about. And even when I look at the reactions throughout the night, after the show, like, you could see some people convincing themselves the last two mics were, matches were great and it saved the night. No, it fucking didn't. Now, maybe for them it did, but in general, no. This show didn't sell out for a reason. The excitement for this show was tepid for a reason. The whole aura and mystique around AEW being the new shiny toy and the new cool thing, that's largely gone. You have to give us reasons to give a crap about these performers, these wrestlers, and the stories that they're involved with. And Tony Khan doesn't do a great job of that. The Four Pillars match wasn't even the main event, and that's for the world title, with arguably your biggest, you know, regular star in MJF. Whatever. I thought this show was bad. Like, it is not... The worst show I have ever seen by any stretch of the fucking imagination. But did I think it was bad? Yeah. Like, the Anarchy at the Arena match starts off and you've got fucking music playing. Oh, it's a guy in fucking blackface! Who the hell okayed that? And then as the match is going and going, the fucking band is still playing Shut the Fuck Up! Not only are they in blackface, they won't go the Fuck away! Anyways, I've seen much better from AEW, and I sure hope to God that what they've got planned for All In at Wembley in a couple of months will be better than what they put on in Vegas on Sunday night, because, yeah, that was kind of... <laughs>